In this video today, I'm gonna to show you 20 of the best Serato DJ Pro settings. Stay right till number one because this setting might actually save your life. Now coming in at number 20 is auto gain. Auto gain is gonna make your life a lot easier. Basically what Serato will do is if you have this setting checked and you analyze your tracks, Serato will balance out all the volumes. Back in the day when tracks were produced, they were poorly made. So some tracks are louder than others. Some tracks are quieter than others. So Serato will kind of balance out all the volumes so all the tracks kind of sound the same. If you didn't have this, you would have to mess around with the trims and the gains on your DJ equipment, which is just extra things you need to do when you're mixing. Now auto gain isn't perfect, Fixed, but it does do a really good job. Coming in at number 19 is enabling hot cues. Now I don't know why this is a setting because I feel like every DJ should have hot cues turned on. Hot cues allow you to jump to certain points of the track. Now the way I set my cue points is if I've got an intro of a track which is usually eight bars long, I'll set the cue point at the start of the intro, in the middle of the intro which is around about four bars just in case I've missed the first cue point and then right at the end of the eighth bar as the vocals come in. If you want me to do a video on how I set my cue points, let me know in the comments down below. Number 18 is track end warning. Have you ever been at a DJ gig before and someone's come up to talk to you you've got completely distracted and next thing you know your music has turned off it's because you didn't have track end warning telling you or flashing at you that your track is about to end now on some of the cheaper DJ controllers like the rev one behind me it doesn't have LEDs around the jog wheel so track end warning won't work on this but on your higher end controllers and your CDJs they have an LED around the jog wheel which will flash when your track is coming to an end if you do a few gigs where you get interrupted by a few people make sure that you turn on track end warning. Number 17 is disabling needle search. Majority of DJ controllers these days have a needle search where you can scan the track by just rubbing your finger along the needle search. Now if you're DJing in front of a big crowd and you accidentally touch this needle search it's going to jump to that certain part of the track which could mess up your mix. <laughs> Now you can disable this in Serato DJ Pro just to kind of safeguard you from doing this. Number 16 is breaking stop time. Now there's a start time and a stop time. I don't really like the start setting because basically what this does is when you press play on your DJ equipment, it does a slow gradual start to get the track going. I don't like this. I like to start my track immediately but with the break, I like to have a little bit turned on and I'll tell you why. Have you ever been DJing before? Maybe your hands are moving a bit too fast and you've accidentally pressed stop on your DJ controller and the music is shut off. If you have this setting turned up just a little bit, it will gradually start to stop. And then when you hear that gradual stop, you'll notice that it's about to stop. Then you can immediately press play again and it will carry on. <laughs> Number 15 is turning on Simple Sync. Now a lot of DJs are against sync. I used to be against sync, but now I utilize Simple Sync quite a bit. Not to beat match and mix for me, but to use some of the features that it provides. Simple Sync brings up the grids in Serato DJ Pro, which I like to use to adjust my grids to make sure everything's aligned. And also if I have Simple Sync turned on and the grids turned on, I can use some of the features from Serato, such as the slicer mode. Now, if you want to use sync for beat matching, that's completely up to you, but I do recommend that you practice practice beat matching with your ears because you don't want to just rely on the DJ software because if your DJ software breaks and you can't use sync, you're not going to be able to DJ your gig. So number 14 is play from first cue point. Have you ever been DJing before? You've loaded a track and you've had to manually move your jog wheel to where you want the track to start. With loading from first cue point, it will immediately jump to your first cue point so you don't have to do any extra work. If you see this example on the screen right now, this is Mario Let Me Love You. Basically at the start of this track, it has that little bit just before the start of the track. So if you don't have load from first cue point, it's gonna start here. But if you turn it on and you load this track again, it will load at the first cue point. Basically this will just save you a lot of time. Also, if you do things like routines, loading from the first cue point can really make your routines better because you can do things much faster. So number 13 is USB buffer size. The default for this when you open up Serato DJ Pro is five milliseconds, but if you have a really powerful computer, you can take it down to two, or you can even take it down to one millisecond. So say for example, you press a cue point on your DJ controller, it's gonna take that little bit of latency before it actually reacts to the software. The lower the latency, the quicker the software will react to your DJ equipment. Number 12 is show iTunes library. Now I organize my music in iTunes because it's a lot better for music organization. Some DJs do organize their music on their computer 
in folders. I don't really like to do this. So if you do use iTunes as your music organization, you can check this setting. And what you can do is you can access all your playlists and all your tracks from iTunes in Serato directly. Number 11 is include subcrate tracks. In Serato, you can create crates and you can create subcrates. So for example, you can have a hip hop crate and then inside that you can have a subcrate called old school hip hop. If you enable this setting, you can see the old school hip hop tracks with inside the hip hop crate. If you disable this setting, if you click the hip hop crate, you can only see the tracks inside the hip hop crate. Then you'll have to directly click the old school hip hop crate to see the tracks in there. I like to have this setting turned on because I like to have all my tracks grouped together. So coming in at number 10 is enable play count. But funny enough, I switched this off. I don't know how many of you guys actually use the play count feature, but I don't personally go through all my tracks and think, oh, do you know what? I haven't played that track in about two months or that track hasn't got that many plays, I'm gonna delete this. I just turn it off because basically every time you load a track, if you look at the bottom of Serato, it's right into the track. I turn this off just to prevent anything else running on my computer. Number nine is the library text size. I have my text size down to two. For you, you might have really bad eyesight. You might wanna turn this up, but I like to have mine at two because it just gives me more information on the screen. For me, when I'm DJing, I like to have everything in front of me. I don't want to have to scroll too much. I don't want to have to scroll left and right too much. I like to have everything directly in front of me. So having it at two allows me to do that. Now coming in at number eight is reset tracks on exit. When you DJ and play a track, the track turns blue. And when you close Serato and open it again, all them blue tracks will be gone. Now I know a lot of DJs that actually like to turn this setting off and just always have blue tracks in Serato and I don't really know how they do it. I tried it once and when I opened up Serato, I was just mad confused. I couldn't remember if I played that song or not. Now number seven is EQ colored waveforms. If you have this set in check, when you turn down the low, mediums and highs, the waveform will actually change color. Now at number six is performance pad layout. Now I don't know why this is a thing. I feel like this should be permanent in Serato. So if you turn this setting off, you can see that the cue points come like this, but if you turn it on, the cue points come like this, which looks exactly like your pads on your DJ controller. Number five is show streaming services. Now, I had a bad experience last week when my Serato crashed due to something to do with streaming, so I actually had this set and turned off. Now, if you do stream from Tidal or BeatSource, you do need to have it on. I have all my MP3s on my laptop, so I don't necessarily have to use streaming services. The reason why I used it the past couple of weeks because I was testing it to see how it was. It crashed on me mid set at 12 a.m. literally at peak time so I've turned this setting off now so if you don't use the streaming services I do suggest that you turn this setting off. Coming in at number four is high res display now I have no idea why anyone would not check this setting if you turn this off Serato will look like this and it will look horrible basically what you need to do is check this setting close Serato open it up again and it will look incredible do not have this setting turned off. This will make your Serato look so much better. It might use a little bit more performance on your computer, but it's 100% worth it. So coming up at number three is show beat jump controls. I use beat jump in every single one of my DJ sets. It's a very useful feature. If you enable this checkbox in Serato, it gives you a new section on your software, which will allow you to select the amount of beats you wanna jump. Say for example, you select 16 beats. If you click the forward button on your software, it will jump 16 beats. You can also control it with your DJ equipment as well. Now coming in at number two is playback keys use shift. I guarantee at one point in your DJ career, you have pressed Q on your keyboard. Do you know what Q is? Q is reverse. So you've been playing your music, you're playing in front of a crowd and you've pressed Q on your keyboard by accident. Your music is now playing in reverse and you don't know how to fix this. Basically to sort this out, you just press Q again and it will change direction. But you can completely avoid this by turning this setting on. Now if you check this setting, you'll have to press shift and Q to make your track go in reverse. Now the only downside of this is I know a lot of DJs like to use their sound effects and their cue points on their keyboard. So what you're gonna have to do if you do do this, you're gonna have to press shift and press one to enable the first cue point, shift and two to enable the second cue point. And then if you wanna do your sound effects, you'd have to do shift Z, X and C, I think the um, sound effects are. They're kind of the cons, but if you have a habit of putting your track in reverse, 
check this setting. Now coming in at number one, at the start of the video, I did say this setting might save your life. Instant doubles allows you to directly duplicate the track that's playing on one of the decks to the other. So say for example, you've got a track on the right hand side, you can duplicate it all the way over to the left hand side. It'll be the exact same position and the exact BPM. Now this is where it's gonna save your life. Say for example, you're DJing in a club and your left CDJ has decided to stop working. What you can do is you can move that CDJ to the side, you can have the mixer and the right deck still playing and what you can do is you can instant double to the left hand side without the deck on the left hand side and continue playing so you can play on the right hand side instant double it to the left and get the next track ready on the right hand side again you just keep doing this over and over and you won't even need the left deck and you can do the exact same thing if the right deck breaks as well now that was 20 of the best serato dj pro settings now that you've watched this video check this video out here where i go through all my serato dj pro crates and how i organize them i'll catch you in the next video